Hey everybody, welcome and thanks for watching True Buggy. We're returning to our TTO2B Buggy Build Series. This is part 5 and we're going to cover steps 8 and 9 in the manual which involve uh, installing the motor. So in step 8, this is describing how to attach the motor plate and pinion that come with the kit. The kit gives you this torque tune motor where you can gear it up and get a little more speed out of the thing without upgrading your motor system. So that's a nice bonus, but I'm going to keep it in the bag. I don't plan on using that. Instead, we're going to use this Team Powers, Plutonium, Brushless 17.5 stock racing motor. This is a censored motor. It's uh, not cheap, but it's been sitting around not doing anything. I really hardly got to use it. Now, this is a great setup. Some people don't like these because it's a plastic motor plate, but the design itself is really nice. It's got preset holes for a few different gearing options here. So that way the mesh is essentially preset. I like that because if you're a beginner, setting your mesh is not the most fun thing to learn to do and uh, even after you're used to doing it it's it's not the most thrilling part of the RC hobby so it's kind of cool to have a design like this that makes that part really easy so you would just attach the motor plate you probably can't see it on camera but there's a tiny 17 printed right there to go with the 17 tooth pinion so you line up the motor like that and now the whole thing will slot right into its mounting place. It's nice that you can pull the motor in and out with this system without affecting your mesh or having to reset it. Perfect for beginners. We're not going to be using that though. We're going to be going with some different pinions. This is the 17 tooth pinion that comes with the kit. It is aluminum. I heard this is one of the harder aluminum ones. Uh, seems that way. I'm, I'm not really sure how to check. Maybe the manual will say. Well, the manual just calls it the 17 tooth pinion gear MA5. So I don't know what material that's made out of. Uh, you can get a couple different ones. We're going to go up to 22 teeth. As you can see, this one is from Tamiya. And if you can read that, it says 06 module hard-coated aluminum pinion gear 22 tooth. 0.6 module is the pitch. That's not what you're normally going to find laying around at your American hobby shop. You're going to need to match those with the included spur gear. So we'll be using something like this, except I don't really want to use this aluminum one. You can get steel pinions in the 0.6 module size from Robinson Racing. This is good stuff. Reasonably priced too. Plus I seem to be able to pick these up at most hobby shops in the states here. I'm gonna, this thing's packed in oil so I'm going to blow it out a little bit. This stuff is cold, right? Alright, now uh, onto the motor mount. And uh, you can flip this over, and on this side, it actually goes from 21 teeth to 25 teeth, and that's pretty cool. So we could use this. Uh, I haven't used this exact one, because this, this part of the kit is new, but the DFO2 had a similar system, and it was uh, the motor mount was made out of the same sort of material and some people lament the durability of this but and it will develop cracks it's going to eventually develop cracks but it's cheap as chips you can replace it and one nice thing about the design is that when you get an aluminum upgrade part it's going to be a very small relatively simple part and you can get the aluminum motor mounts for usually 10 bucks or the eight dollar to twelve dollar range so that's a cool part of the design is it's easy to make upgraded versions of it. This is a motor mount for a 380 motor. 
So if you want to use this as a little trainer or as like a uh, a little trail buggy that gets lots of battery life or you want to hand it over to a kid, you can get a little 380 motor and mount it in here with no fuss and that's, uh, that's pretty cool. To go along with our high speed gear kit here that lets us use any gear if we want, we're going to need an adjustable motor mount such as this. As you can see it's slotted. If this was going for the final install, you would want to use some thread lock on this since we're going metal to metal here. In this case, I'm really doing this as more of a test fit since obviously I'm going to need to do some soldering on this motor. So I'm not going to use thread lock at the moment. By the way, the brand of this adjustable motor mount completely escapes me at the moment. I got it from eBay. It fits a TTO2B. No reason to be picky. So there we are. This should drop right in, which it does, good. And we'll take our Robinson Racing Pinion. Drop this in here. I basically set it so there's just a tiny perceptible bit of knock between the teeth like that. That seems to be the way they like it. As you can see, I can tighten the motor mount while it's installed in here. And then with everything lined up in my mesh set, I can actually remove the whole motor to clean or anything. And this is why I like this system really, is it's easy. Once the spur cover is off here, I can just pull the motor out, spray everything off or dust it, and you can drop the motor right back in without affecting your mesh. It's right where you left it. Isn't that cool? Now, the kit instructions are calling to use this motor plate. I don't really know what this is for. I mean, I could put it in or leave it out. I really wouldn't care. If anyone could chime in in the comment section and tell me why this is there, uh, maybe I can learn something because I never really gave it much thought. Spur cover goes over, helps retain the motor mount. It is a great fit and it goes down with a number of 10 millimeter screws, four in fact. I'm only gonna put in two right now since this is not my final fitment of the motor. Interestingly, the manual would like you to add a little bit of AW grease. You can see right here, they're saying to apply the grease right behind the spur there where the two parts overlap. That indicates to me that this is an area where dirt can get in when the machine is flexing and running in the dirt. Uh, dirt could get into that gap and that is, I imagine, why they're telling you to put AW grease there. All right, so we are almost done there. I wanna show you one more small but important improvement to the design of this car over its predecessor. The motor mount is actually designed with two screw holes in the bottom. They have added a place in the bottom where you actually sink screws directly into the motor mount. And obviously if your motor mount is aluminum, that is all the better. So we're not going to put those in now, but you would dab some when you're ready for your final assembly. You're going to take one of your, some of your unreliable brand X thread lock like this. Having it screwed in from the bottom like that's going to help a lot. So there we go. Uh, not my final motor install, but just want to cover the manual step by step like we said we were going to do. And next time I'm really excited. Next time we're getting into the suspension steps 10, 11, Looks like steps 10 through 
19 are all attaching the suspension. We may be breaking those up a little bit. Uh, depends on how much I find to talk about. I have looked over it and like every part of it's interesting to me. This is my favorite part of any car is its suspension design. And this one is a huge improvement. It looks like over the DFO2 suspension, which I liked very much already. All right, everybody, thanks for watching, and I will catch you next time.